breaks forever. Come on, he can't be voted out. He can't be vetoed. He's got complete control. Oh God, he's got it over our house, the church house, the white house. He's in control. He reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Would you stand to your feet if you've got the activity of your lips tonight as we prepare to pray to ask God to bless our time together in worship. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for another opportunity to be in your presence. Yes. Help us, oh God, at the start of this service to lay aside any weight that might beset us. Help us, oh God, to bring in the uh, scattered thoughts of our mind. God, help us to give you the worship of our attention tonight because you alone are worthy of it. God, we come tonight and we come just because we need to hear a word from you. We need to be uplifted and encouraged and strengthened and challenged tonight. And so, God, we've come because the world suggested we ought to be discouraged, but in you we have hope. Despite what we hear on the news and despite uh, the gun violence in our community and despite our own personal circumstances, God, we press our way into your house because we want to be in your presence. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. And oh God, in this revival season, after we have toiled and worked and served, God, we've come with empty cups tonight and we just declare simply, here's our cup, fill it up, God, and let it overflow. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God sit together, amen. Come on, if you love the Lord tonight, declare amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, put your hands together as the choir comes with their opening selection. Followed by welcome by sister Siobhan Taylor and devotions by Reverend uh, Simmons tonight. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. 
I'm here to welcome you to the final night of our 2023 Spring Revival. so 
If you want to act like you in the choir, and you want to go and sing and sing like you in the choir. We ain't called you to preach, but when the preacher preaching, you want to stand up on your feet and shout amen. Because we ain't the only ones up here with a one time praise.
go out appetizers is nice, but I'm waiting for the entree. And I'm so grateful. Listen, I came hungry tonight. Listen, I, every round has gone higher and higher, and I just believe God is getting ready to catapult us into something. Is there anybody with an expectation? don't want you to do. I'm just going to read a snippet of her bio, not the whole thing, because Reverend, uh, the Reverend Dr. Molly Fulk is an amazing woman, and her, her gifts and her talents have made room for her all over the country and the world, really. And so I won't read it all, but I'm going to lift this. Reverend Dr. Fuller is a woman of God sent by God to do God's will. Dr. Fuller was installed as the 11th pastor of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church on Saturday, June 29, 2019. She served as interim pastor from August 2017 until she was elected pastor February 2019. Dr. Fuller is a dynamic preacher, counselor, coach, and author. Dr. Fuller's faith and spiritual development was first nurtured under the leadership of her grandfather, the late District Elder Willie Nelson, the former pastor of Apostolic Faith Church of All Nations. For more than 30 years, Dr. Fuller led and organized choirs across numerous churches as a musician and choral director. Dr. Fuller also earned a Master's of Divinity degree from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University and has an earned Doctor of Ministry and Formational Counseling from Ashland Theological Seminary. And if this is one line she won't mind me reading out of her bio. She is the proud mom of her son Thomas and the daughter of John and Dorothy Fuller of Richmond, Virginia. Her church is clapping because they know how she feels about time. Oh, she's a mother who loves her son. But well, let me tell you this. I did not meet the Reverend Dr. Molly Fuller at the prestigious Virginia Union University. No, no, no. I met her in a, in a, in a conference, in a woman's conference. And, and I was designated to be the choir director. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm there to get the folks in line. And I run up on this joker who's been directing choirs for 30 years and I didn't know it. Oh, but she held us down in that choir and we became fast friends as you all can imagine because your pastor is a music director and choir director as well. And so we are truly uh, birds of a feather. We are truly sisters that are bonding. And can I tell you that this woman right here prays for your pastor. Amen. And so I'm grateful for her friendship. I'm grateful for her ministry. And after this choir, the next voice you will hear will be none other than the Reverend Dr. Marlene Fuller, pastor of the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. Would you do me a favor and extend your hands to her? And would you repeat after me? Preach. Preach or preach. No, no, no. You ain't saying it like you mean it. I need you to say it like you need something from God.
maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker. joy to be with y'all. My, my parents are mentioned in um, the bio, and for those of you, especially Greater Joy, you don't know my parents, I'm going to tell them to stand up so they can wave so y'all will know who, who mom and dad are. Praise God. I am because they decided to be. Ain't that good? I am because they decided to be. The teenager is at home, I think, doing homework. 
According to the security camera, I think he was in the driveway playing basketball at one point. Because it beats up every time, right? Amen, amen, amen. On tonight, I do want to invite you to turn to your Bible, swipe to your Bibles, the 37th chapter of Psalm. 37th chapter of Psalm. I'm going to take a look at verse 1 through 9. While you're finding that word, I want to just say thank you to this music ministry who is blessing our hearts on tonight in the middle of the week. Let us the Mac here tickling the ivories. Praise God. Who drove tonight? You or him? Oh, okay. He drove? Oh, okay. Amen. Psalms 37 chapter verses 1 through 9. 37. And y'all, let's stand to our feet in reverence to the reading of God's holy word on tonight. Amen, amen. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads like this. It says, do not fret. Do not fret. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light. And the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way. Over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. And once again the psalmist says, do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. And that is the word of the Lord. Let us pray, most gracious God. We honor you on tonight. We thank you already, Lord God, for being with us. Lord God, we acknowledge your presence on tonight, for you are already with us. We just ask now, Lord God, that your spirit fall heavy upon us. That it on us anew. That our ears will hear exactly what it is that you want to say to our every soul's condition. That you would renew our mind on tonight, transform our hearts, renew a spirit in us that would even increase and strengthen our faith. God, I rebuke every bit of distractions on tonight, that there won't be anything that will stand in the way of me speaking and the people hearing. So you speak, God. You speak, God. You speak until it's clear. God, even hide me right now, that folks won't be concerned about what I say or what I do, but more about what you say through me. This is my prayer and cry humbly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated on tonight. For a little while while we're together, I'd like to use the topic, ain't no need to worry. Ain't no need to worry. Worry is a cognitive state of anxiety or uncertainty over actual or potential problems. It's one thing to worry over things that are already in progress, but it is something else when your mind begins to rehearse the pain and the problem of something that hasn't even happened and most likely will not even occur. Worry is a persistent disturbance to our peace a distress that causes unrest to our soul. When the soul is distressed, we don't rest. When we're awake, the mind is racing. When we're trying to sleep, the mind is racing. 
where is a persistent disturbance to our joy. The situation may be temporary, but how we feel about it just won't stop. Worrying takes over the mind will destroy our health and our relationships. We'll make decisions based out of our worry. Yeah. Worry will lead us to seek comfort in things that are not of God. And when this happens, it separates us from the presence of God. When we worry, it breeds jealousy and envy. We focus more on what others have instead of counting our blessings. We see the neglected as half empty rather than half full. Worry will point us to all of the problems and expected disappointments. Somebody say, I don't want to worry. Yet we do worry. We worry about food, we worry about clothing, a place to live, we worry about bills, we worry about our health, we worry about the economy, we worry about world peace and the ongoing situations of war, we worry about our children, our grandchildren, we worry about our spouses, we worry about the church, we worry about the next job even while we already got a job. Is there anybody other than me that spent some time worrying about some things? about health care, insurance. We worry about those immigrants at the border. We worry about gun violence, safety at the schools, safety in the parks. We spend a lot of time worrying. In this 37th chapter of Psalm, David addressed, or rather pleaded with the Israelites to not worry. Three times he said, do not fret. His basis for letting go of the worry was that God is a God of providence. They abide under the protective care of God to meet all of their needs. God takes care of them. God provides for them. God makes a way out of no way. God is the lifter up of their heads. God protected them from the enemy. God is a present help when they are in trouble. God provides. Just take a moment to think about the goodness of the Lord and how God has even kept you, kept you from losing your mind, kept you from falling. You knew the danger. You knew the situation. You saw how it turned with some other folks, but look at you. Yeah. But, God. but God, you're still standing. But God, you, you made it. Somebody say God provides. And because there ain't no need to worry. Don't worry about your job. God provides. Don't worry about your spouse or that troubling relationship. God provides. Don't worry about what others have and how they got it. God provides. God is providence. The word providence comes from the Latin word providentia, which means foresight or prudence. That in turn translates pro to meaning ahead, and the term vadir means to see. God is the one who sees ahead. God is prudent and has foresight. God knows your ending at your beginning. God is careful about the things which concerns you and is already ahead of you, working it all out for your good. While we're still trying to figure it out, trying to plan it, God has already seen it and foretold just how it's going to be. Stop worrying about it when God is providential. The psalmist David understood that in our humanness, we will worry based on what we see. We see brokenness. We see illness. We see loneliness, we see unemployment, we see the situation and we see good things happening even to our enemies. Yes. Truthfully, when we see good things happening for, to our enemies, it can challenge our integrity and our faith. In this text, David addressed the people's response to the inconsistency connected to the prosperity of the wicked. People who didn't love God, seem to be living better and doing better than those who love God. When there is a perception that the wicked are prospering, 
People may be tempted to take shortcuts rather than wait for God to be their provider. They may be tempted to come up with their own plan, tempted to give up on God. The psalmist spoke to himself. Oh, yeah, to speak to himself. And he spoke to the people to calm them man, and appeal to them to be patient. Yeah. Be patient in God. Yeah. Yeah. Children of God, on tonight, I came to encourage you to be wise, to live in wisdom concerning your life and God's direction for your life so that you may be discerning about the things that cause you to worry. God gives us peace. God gives us power. God predestined our lives. Today we declare that we are releasing worry. We're releasing in the jealousy and we're picking up the joy of the Lord. We're going to speak truth to power. We shall win. Uh, our enemies shall be our footstools. Uh, brothers and sisters, pick your head up and put a smile on your face. Uh, our God knows your name. Our God is a present help in the time of trouble. You come this too far this far, and you're still here. It's time to live and live better than what we've been doing. And worrying about tomorrow takes the joy out of today. And today I'm on everything that God has for me. Yesterday is on. Today I want it all. My future is in the hands of God. Today I'm trusting God for my tomorrow. So David says three times, do not fret. Do not fret. Do not fret. Don't worry about this. God is our provider. Yeah. So tonight's relevant question is then how should I stop worrying? Yeah. But Pastor, I don't want to worry. Yeah. I've been trying to get some stuff off my mind, but tell me, how shall I stop worrying? Yeah. I'm so glad that you asked me because David yeah. gave some answers to the next thing. Yeah. First, he says we must trust God. Everything about this text is an admoni admonition to trust God. In verse 3, the psalmist David said, trust God yeah. and do good. Yeah. Children of God, this is the place where we have to let go of whatever it is and take your hands off of it and trust God for new mercies. Yeah. Trust God that yesterday's mistakes won't prevent today's new mercies. Yeah. Trust God by getting to know God, though, too. Have a little talk with God. Sit down somewhere and rest and listen while God talks to you. I promise you, you sit there for a little while and listen. You'll hear God tell you all about what, which way to go, whether you should go to the left or whether you should go to the right. Trust God by reminding yourself daily of who God is. Trust God by trying God. And I know that if you try God and get to know God, you will learn to lean on what God can do and not what you can do. See, you can't see it yet. Trust God even when you can't trace God. You may not be able to see God moving, but know that God is already there. Trust the presence of God in your life. So don't trust God because we don't know God. To trust God, we must have a relationship with our God. It means you got to spend some quality time. I am absolutely certain that out of all the love languages, that, that the one that God got is the most quality time. To trust God, we've got to have a relationship with God, a real relationship with God, not just on Sunday morning for about 90 minutes, a real relationship that's going to build some trust. And when you trust God, you will start you won't be able to contain the goodness of God. It will overflow. Goodness will follow you all the days of your life. Ain't no need to hold on to it. For you trust God that more is coming. See, I trust God for the more. Oh, and goodness is bringing a friend. They mercy. Surely when you trust God for goodness and mercy, you'll be able to trust God. The less you worry. 
Somebody say God's got it. Yeah. Trusting in God, believing that God's got it. Yeah. God's got you. Yeah. God's got your family. Yeah. God's got your parents. Yeah. God's got this world. Yeah. God's got this government. Yeah. God's got your body. God's got it. Secondly, to stop worrying, we must delight in God. Yeah. The word delight is a verb. Meaning to take action, to take great pleasure in God, to please God, or to be God's pleasure. The psalmist said in verse 4, take delight, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delighting in this context is about trading our worries for faith, trading our anxieties for hope. Even trading our discouragement for contentment. The Israelites were being and comparing themselves to the wicked as a means of success. The psalmist David encouraged them not to be envious of them. They will soon fade like the grass and were like the green herb. Whatever they had that looked good was temporary. It was only a season. It was going to fade away. Children of God, let's not compare ourselves to others. And surely let's not compare our lives to those who don't even love God. This is a spirit of jealousy and envy. Maybe if we can buy house, if we can just get this, if we can just do that, and then you get it. And you still were not satisfied. The quest for something more, something bigger, the new promotion, the shinier gadget, the new car, the money is not going to fulfill our longing. When we strive for this, we're just like the evildoer. And the benefit is only going to be temporary. It's going to fade away like the grass. Delight yourself in God's way and seek after things eternal. Delight in holiness. Delight in righteousness. Delight in God's love even in the middle of hate. Delight in the one who can see ahead of what you can see. That's called faith. Delight in the one who knows your future. That's hope. Delight in the one who can and will supply your In order to stop worrying, we must wait patiently on God. Come on. David stated in verse 7, he said, be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Somebody say patiently. Patience. Wait patiently for him. This was not the first time the psalmist encouraged them to wait on God. In Psalms 27, verse 14, he told the people to wait patiently for the Lord. Be strong and of good courage. Wait patiently for the Lord, and the Lord will strengthen their heart. Waiting. Waiting. Waiting is an act of worship. Waiting acknowledges that God is already working on it, and that I believe that God can and will handle it. Waiting puts all of it on God. Waiting says that we trust God for it and we can take our hands off of it. Patiently waiting acknowledges that God knows the right season, the right time. God has a plan for you. Patiently waiting says I trust that God knows what's best for me. I may want it right now, but God knows that this is not the right time and I'm willing to wait on God for the ordained time. 
Now waiting, waiting without God will have your mind rehearsing the possible pain if you don't do something. I feel like I should say that one more time. Waiting without God will have your mind rehearsing pain if you don't do something, pain that ain't even happened yet. If you don't control it, and if you don't make it work out for your good, waiting without God will bring sleepless nights. Yeah. Waiting for your timing, not God's timing, is going to increase your worry. But waiting on God, waiting patiently on God will unload your burden and make your load a lot lighter. Yeah, yeah. They that wait for the Lord shall renew yeah. their strength. They shall mount up yeah. with wings like this. They shall run and not be aware of it. They walk and not faint. Children of God, wait on God yeah. for every situation, for every battle of Let it go. The Bible says that weeping may 
to a point uh, and joy comes in the morning. Uh, sing to God when the morning comes. Uh, you ought to let the night time go. Uh, stop worrying about last night. Uh, let it go. Uh, you're in the morning time now. Uh, let go of last night. Uh, let go of the darkness. Uh, what he said, what he did was wrong. Uh, what she said.
ain't got no need to worry. Come on, I'm grateful for that reminder on tonight. I don't care how saved you are, how blessed you are. I don't even care if you go preach or anything. We all need to remember. Don't pray, don't pray, don't pray. Amen. Oh, we'll have Dr. Fuller come at this time so she can close out us, us out in her own way. I want to thank all of you all for being here for the Spring Revival Bring Joy. I'm grateful for you. Listen, on Sunday morning, it is the fifth Sunday of the month. It is our Be the Church weekend. We will be worshiping next door at Commonwealth Living Facility. Amen. And in doing so, we're asking that you would donate, bring some toiletries for our family and friends there. Amen. 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 Come on, Dr. Fuller. Come on, close this Amen. 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 Praise God. I, I hear, I see that y'all are doing good work over here at Great and Joy. to the next time that we're going to be together. Isn't it good when brothers and sisters come together to worship and come together in unity? Isn't that a good thing? Amen, amen. So I'm not going to acknowledge everything else. Just know that I love each and every one of you. To the members of Pleasant Grove who drove all the way from Hanover County on tonight. So for Reverend Val, who, yeah, Warmly welcome me as I came in on today. We got several preachers in the choir on tonight. Once again, to our music ministry, I love you. I love you, Charlotte. To God be the glory. Amen. Let's get ready to go home. Lord God, I thank you for how you met us in this place. There was something I was thinking about when I arrived. I think I was worried about when I arrived, but God, now that you've met us, I can't seem to remember what that is. Uh, so God, I hope that you have done the same thing for some other folks. I, I pray, Lord God, that it will carry them not just through tonight, but it will carry them on for many days and many weeks to come. That they will remember who you are, that they will acknowledge your presence in their everyday lives. God, we still need you. We still need you in everything. God, I'm asking right now that you uh, pour out a great blessing to greater community or greater joy community, church. Pour out a great blessing, Lord God. For I believe that we got cheerful givers here, Lord God. We want to pour out and want to trust you and do some good in this community. God, I'm asking that you move through them right now. Work through them right now. Bless the work of their hands. Multiply it in the name of Jesus, God. Restore their pastor for all of how she pours out into them and how she labors right now, God. Give her joy right now, God. Renew her strength, God. Let this joy carry her through that even worry about thinking that this is a work of sign and uh, she'll just be so happy serving you and uh, being in your presence. God, do it for my friend. God, do it for my friend. God, God, I thank you right now because I believe in traveling mercies. I believe that our homes are just as they were when we left them. And even better, now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, Thank you.